Mr. Fleming is a very lucky man to have such a faithful friend. How well do you know him? Casually. Why? For a casual acquaintance, you seem to be extraordinarily anxious to help him. Where did you meet him? In Budapest. Oh, but what were you doing there? Oh, I was visiting some old friends in Vienna. The Iron Curtain was being lifted, as you know, and I thought it would be amusing to take a flying trip to Budapest. Mr. Fleming was staying in the same hotel. What do I put here? Oh, well, never mind that for the moment. Go on. Well, we had dinner a couple of times. Do you want to know what we ate? He's a good-looking man, Mr. Fleming. Mm -hmm. He's also very charming and very gay. Well, besides being very charming and gay, what does he do in life? Uh, he's in business, as far as I know. That's odd. I thought all businessmen were fat and worried. Oh, you shouldn't believe your own propaganda, you know. Should I believe yours? What hotel did you say you stayed at? I didn't say, but it was the Gelliard. Do you remember Mr. Fleming's room number? Now, of what possible interest could that be to you? It might make checking simpler. You're all in such a hurry to leave. I've made applications for visas before, but I've never yet had to describe my hotel accommodation. I must say, I find your curiosity a little excessive. Perhaps. But to be quite frank, I find this Mr. Fleming quite a mystery. Now, take his passport, for instance. There isn't a single entry or exit stamp in it. Amazing. Mr. Fleming comes from nowhere and is going nowhere. One day, he simply appeared in Budapest out of nothing. Oh, that. Well, now wait. I remember. He told me how he lost his passport on his arrival, and he applied for a new one at our legation. New passports don't usually have old stamps on them, not in England, at least. Well, that about exhausts my knowledge of Mr. Fleming. You've been very kind. May I go now? this this boy last night he started shooting at us they don't want you here <laughs> 